Welcome to the Sensure 5 overview. What you're looking at is the default Sensure interface for the HTML5 client. In the sidebar, we can see frequently needed items like tasks, favorites, saved searches, and a history of recently opened items to make them all easily accessible. In the main window, we can see widgets which are completely flexible independent elements that can be moved around from the user's end and we can add or remove widgets to any page we like in any tab. The information sources for the widgets can come from internally, like this task list, showing tasks assigned to the users. It can also contain geographic data, like here where we see the user's location and any assets that are nearby that particular user. It can also pull statistics from within the system itself, like this chart showing the current status of a current brochure. We can also pull information from external sources, in this case in a different tab, so that we can see, in this case, a website or a Twitter feed of information from externally, so that we can have all information available at our fingertips when we need it. Also, we can pull information via a REST interface from any other internal or external source, allowing us to build up dynamic interfaces that give us the ability to show reports switching off information as we do or don't need it. I'll note that this is the HTML5 client. It's designed to be flexible, lightweight and easy to use for most users. For users who are working closely with the direct InDesign documents or larger files, there is a production client which has much closer ties with the desktop, especially with the Adobe Suite. To find items easily within the system, you simply make use of the search bar. To search for an item, start typing a name or any piece of metadata which is associated with that particular item. The look ahead will automatically present other options from other names to other items, say for example the description. You can also limit your search very easily by some defaults which appear of the different types or we can configure what different options we'd like to see. We also have the ability to save searches for later use or to create advanced searches with complex if or statements. We can show the results by relevance to your search or by any other metric which is on there, for example, the creation time. We also have different views to view the results in. In this case, we can look at a standard gallery view to be able to see the results. Once we see all the results, we could reduce them down even further by using the filter tool. In this case, I only want to see the JPEGs, so I'll reduce it down to just the JPEGs. At any time, we can get a closer view of any of the assets by pressing the I to see an overview and some of the specific details about the asset. Lastly, we can view in what's called the relation view. This demonstrates some of the power of SendShare where each asset has connections to various other types of assets throughout the system. In this case, for this asset, we can straight see straight away who the author is, we can see who the budget approver of this particular asset is, we can see who is assigned to it, and lastly, we can see that it's been placed in two documents and in one PowerPoint presentation and one Facebook post. We can drill down through any of these assets to be able to see all of its connections right the way through. In this particular case, we can see that this asset has three different assignments to it. It's also been assigned to two different brochures. If we go back to the initial image, we can see the power of the system itself by having the single source of truth throughout the system. If we've added any metadata, for example, image rights or any other useful metadata for that particular asset, when that asset is changed, it will update in all places it's been used, whether that's InDesign documents or whether that's a Facebook post as here. 
the same asset can be used in multiple different places and it will automatically generate the right resolution for that. In this Facebook post, it's also automatically tracking the Facebook ID, the unique code generated by Facebook, the URL, and that means that it can also track the likes and shares of this particular Facebook post. Thanks for watching this brief overview of the SendShare interface.